How is everyone today? I am Jonaga, and I am completing what I am calling the Ultimate Living Dex, a living dex in all 32 Pokemon games. I will be completing the games in order, so we're going to start with the first generation. Let's get into it. So first things first, I will be playing the first generation on original cartridges. I'm not going to be using the Virtual Console remakes available on the 3DS. This is a personal preference thing just for me. I want to have an original game with a completed save. Even though having the Virtual Console versions might make it a little easier for me down the road, since they can interact with Pokemon Bank, I am going to be working with original cartridges. Now, Rather than go through all 151 Pokemon and how to catch them for each game, I am going to be going through the problem Pokemon for the generation. Mainly in the first generation, these are going to be the Pokemon that you only get one of. Now this isn't as big of a problem as you might think. This is because, with five exceptions, every Pokemon that I am going to list can be bred if traded to Generation 2, which I will be doing. That means that there are only five Pokémon that I'm going to have to be replaying each first-generation game for. But let's start with those problem Pokémon. The first to obvious ones are going to be the starter Pokémon, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. I only get one of these across all three games, either as your starter in red and blue or as a gift Pokémon in Pokémon Yellow. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be restarting the games each time to get one of all of them. I'm going to trade them into a Gen 2 game so that I can get the rest of their evolutionary line. Next up is one that's kind of a problem Pokemon, kind of not. It is far-fetched. It is a Vermilion City trade if you have a Spearow, but this one is catchable in the wild in Pokemon Yellow. Then there are Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, which you only get one of as an option once you beat the Saffron City Dojo. And then Lickitung, another trade Pokemon for a Slowbro at the Route 18 gate. Like Farfetch'd, this one actually is catchable in Pokemon Yellow. And then Mr. Mime, who is a Route 2 trade either for an Abra in Blue and Red, or for a Clefairy in Pokemon Yellow. Next is Jinx, who is a Cerulean City trade for a Poliwhirl. And then Lapras, who is a gift Pokemon from the Sylph Co. Now so far, with the exception of the starters, none of these are really problem Pokemon, because I can get as many as I need to have a living dex in the first generation, since they don't evolve or have any baby Pokemon until later generations. Next up is going to be Eevee and its evolutions, since you only get one as a Celadon City gift Pokemon. But this, like the starters, can be bred in the second generation so that I can get as many Eevees as I need to have an Eevee, Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon in all of my games. The worst offender for the generation is probably going to be Porygon, who is only available as a Game Corner prize. To get it, you need either the maximum 9,999 coins, or spend $200,000 in red and yellow, or the slightly more reasonable 6,500 coins, or $130,000 in Pokemon Blue. I'm thinking that I'm only going to get one of them in Pokemon Blue and then breed it in Generation 2 for Red and Yellow. Next we have the Fossil Pokemon. You can either pick the Helix Fossil for an Omanyte in Mount Moon or the Dome Fossil for a Kabuto. And then again, I'm going to be trading them to breed so that I can have both of them and their evolutions, Omastar and Kabutops in all games, and the Aerodactyl that you get as an Old Amber. The last one, before we get to the five exceptions, you actually have two chances to get, and that is Snorlax, that you wake up with the Pokey Flute on routes 12 and 16. With all of those out of the way, let's get to the five exceptions that I keep talking about, and those, of course, are the legendary Pokemon Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, and Mewtwo, and the mythical Pokemon Mew. Now, for the Legendary Birds and Mewtwo, you only get one of them across all of the games. Now, that might not seem like a problem. I can get one of them in every game, so I can have a Living Dex in every game. The problem comes when I go on to the second generation of games. Because they are not available anywhere in those games, I need to get them from the first generation. This means that in order to have an Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, and Mewtwo, in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, I need to trade them from Red, Blue, or Yellow. 
This means that I will have to play the first generation an additional three times. The last Pokémon on this list is the mythical Pokémon Mew, which was only available through distributed events for the games when they were still new. Obviously, because of the age of these games, there is no chance for future events for them. This means that Mew is only available through the famous Mew Glitch. If you don't know what the Mew Glitch is, the easiest version of it is a variation of the Long Range Trainer Glitch. This lets you fly or teleport or escape away from a trainer that is all the way on the edge of the screen, go fight some other Pokémon, and then when you come back to the area with the long-range trainer that you used, you will encounter a Pokémon based on the special stat of the last Pokémon that you fought. I will be doing this enough times to have the three Mew that I need for red, blue, and yellow, and for three more in gold, silver, and crystal. With the first generation plan out of the way, I will start streaming the first generation over on Twitch, so follow me over there at twitch.tv slash 14 If you want to be notified of when I will start streaming ahead of time, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, at JohnnagaYT. I will begin streaming sometime next week and uploading milestone videos right here, so go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss those. That's all I've got for you today. I will catch you in the next one.